again, uh, you know, reading my favorite uh, uh, Indian writer, Abhinav Gupta, there's some very suggestive evidence that this line of reasoning is probably accurate. So, Abhinav Gupta in his works, he ranked all the various bodily senses in a hierarchy. And of course, for him, like the hierarchy means the best is to be like closest to pure consciousness, right? So, he says the inner touch is the most subtle of all the senses. And in India, like if it's more subtle, it's very good. Like if it's gross, thul, like it's okay, but like, you know, like you want to be very special, it needs to be very subtle. So, he says the inner touch is the most subtle of all the senses. And he says it's the closest to pure consciousness, which is what is like, you know, his uh, kind of goal of his, all his practice was to go to pure consciousness. And this is a map of something called the brain stem, which is kind of in the back of the brain. It is the most important part of the brain, kind of called the lizard brain. It's very old. And that's where all the structures which support consciousness live. So what's interesting here is that I actually wrote a review paper on the brain stem and like how it works in emotions. What's interesting here is that the interoceptive system, which is like the sensations from the internal organs and heart and all that, they actually project very closely to the structures in the brain stem which support consciousness and arousal. And this is not true for other senses like vision or hearing. They are all travel through that area, but they don't project as much to those consciousness supporting structures, which is very fascinating. Did Abhinav Gupta at that time through his internal perception, kind of work out this close relationship between these two uh, kind of structures. It could be. And of course, Abhinav Gupta, as you know, is not just a philosopher. He's also a very big aesthetics guy. He's like written a lot of stuff on art, art appreciation. Um, and his uh, big idea, of course, that we still talk about is uh, rasa, which is uh, basically he, uh, he termed it like the way you appreciate an artistic experience. And this was an article from several years ago, which is like very uh, prominent in the humanities literature, the aesthetic and the religious Rasaswada and Brahmaswada and Kashmir Shaivism. Um, so for Abhinav Gupta, the Rasa was the taste of an experience. He specifically used this term Rasa. And he says it was at the border between the concept, conceptual world and the concept free ultimate reality or pure consciousness. That was the border Rasa. That's why it was so important to him. And he says, if you went to a show or an art uh, exhibition, Unless that experience of rasa was felt, unless you got the taste of that art, it wasn't really like, uh, you hadn't really like experienced it. It wasn't enough if you just went there and kind of went through the motions. It's, something had to happen which you felt like you were tasting it. And again, another very fascinating aspect in terms of the inner touch and taste is that there is this area in the back of the brain called uh, uh, the nucleus of the tractus solitarius or the NTS, where sensory inputs are integrated the two major sensory inputs are from the body and taste. So it's very strange, like these sensory inputs of all the various ones could be vision, could be hearing, could be smell. None of those are involved, but taste and the bodily inputs, the inner touch and taste, so rasa and the inner touch are kind of concentrated here. And it's not just here. From this point onwards, everywhere the body maps the uh, internal sensations, it also maps taste.